Welcome to the Cosmic Busker. My name is Bobby Cody. In this video, I want to take a look at an article that recently came into my Google News feed. Uh, it came from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, the article references a paper in uh, Nature Astronomy, uh, which is a scientific publication. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology article goes over the asteroid Pallas. Now, this asteroid Pallas has a pockmarked surface, and it's very interesting. They, they say these are craters. It was bombarded by smaller asteroids, etc. Certainly feasible. Uh, I don't have the scientific knowledge necessary to say that they're not correct. However, I put this within a broader, much broader um, understanding of what we found uh, throughout the solar system, where I believe this shows that uh, asteroid Pallas is artificial in nature, just like other objects in our solar system have been shown to be potentially artificial in nature. So I'm going to first take a look at this article, go over some key aspects of this article, then we'll come back and talk about it, and I'll talk about it within this broader picture of these other artificial uh, objects in our solar system. So let's cut to that uh, Massachusetts Institute, excuse me, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology article right now. Thanks. This article is on the Massachusetts Institute of Technology website. Link is down below. It was written by Jennifer Chu on February 10, 2020. The headline reads, Study reveals details of golf ball asteroid. A tilted orbit may explain the asteroid palace's highly cratered surface. Asteroids come in all shapes and sizes, and now astronomers at MIT and elsewhere have observed an asteroid so heavily cratered that they are dubbing it the golf ball asteroid. In a paper published today in Nature Astronomy, researchers revealed detailed images of Pallas, including its heavily cratered surface, for the first time. The researchers made two additional discoveries from their images, a curiously bright spot in the asteroid's southern hemisphere and an extremely large impact basin along the asteroid's equator. As for the bright spot discovered in Pallas's southern hemisphere, the researchers are still unclear as to what it might be. Their leading theory is that the region could be a very large salt deposit. Now, the reason that they say that this bright spot on Pallas may be salt deposits, it's from past history. Uh, the dwarf planet Ceres, which is actually just a large asteroid in the asteroid belt, it's the largest asteroid there is, they found this bright spot just shining on the planet. Um, sh shocked, they were initially shocked by it. What could this be? They initially uh, allegedly made the determination that it was a sodium carbonate or salt, uh, essentially a salt deposit. And so they're seeing something similar on this asteroid palace. So saying, ah, this is probably just like on Ceres, a salt deposit. Um, whether that's a salt deposit or not, I can't make the definitive determination, obviously. Um, what I'd like to say, if they claim this is a salt deposit, I would like to see an analogous example on Earth. Show me, um, you know, a satellite photo of the planet Earth with this bright spot shining up into the sky and say, yeah, there's a salt deposit on Earth, just like on Sirius and Pallas, then I'll believe it's a salt deposit. Because this is highly unusual. It has such a high reflectivity. Um, it makes it unlikely to me that it's sodium carbonate or a salt deposit. Now, uh, the default the default explanation for mainstream scientists is it cannot be extraterrestrial, so we have to find anything that's going to fit into our paradigm, which means that we're the only intelligent species in the universe and in our solar system, so this cannot be something that was created artificially. So they have to find something else. My opinion is, is that they're overlooking the potential that this may be some type of civilization sign. Um, regardless, what I want to talk about with Pallas is that heavily cratered 
uh, surface as well. I think it was Richard Hoagland. Uh, you can research Richard Hoagland yourself. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I've done some other papers uh, regarding uh, or videos regarding Richard Hoagland, where he talks about if these asteroids were essentially hollowed out and rooms were created in them and they were converted spaceships, you know, at, assuming tens of thousands, if not millions of years old, the surface would be weathered. And ultimately, the surface would get weathered, and it would expose the rooms inside. And from the outside, it would look like a cratered asteroid, potentially. So it's my suspicion that's what we're getting with this, this asteroid palace. That what we're not, what we're seeing, are craters, but the surface worn away such that it exposes the rooms inside of this asteroid turned into a spaceship way, way back when. Um, I also uh, throw this out. If it is such a heavily cratered object, all these craters could not be uh, have their own shapes together. They would merge into each other and they would, you know, they would smash into each other. You wouldn't get these individual craters I'm going to throw up the picture so you can see it. You wouldn't get these individual craters. They would merge into each other. One, here's a half a crater smashing into another. You know what I mean? When you look at this, to me, it, it, they don't merge into each other. They're separate. So that, to me, that seems to show, again, that it may be rooms. That it's, that's, this is an asteroid turned into a spaceship, essentially. Now, I want to take a look at a couple other examples where I, earlier in the video I talked about the broader picture. And I want to show a couple examples of the broader picture and why I put this into a broader picture. I'm going to cut to NASA astronaut Buzz Aldrin right now talking about the moon Phobos. The Phobos is the Martian moon. It orbits the planet Mars. It orbits it in such a way that it shouldn't be able to orbit. Uh, it's a very, if I remember correctly, it's a very circular orbit. Shouldn't have this type of circular orbit. The orbit should have been degraded already and crashed into into Mars. It shouldn't be there. Um, people have hypothesized that it, we know it is an asteroid. The Phobos was initially an asteroid that got captured by Mars. People have postulated that Phobos is actually an uh, asteroid turned into a spaceship. And here's Buzz Aldrin in a C-SPAN interview talking about something that was found on the surface of Phobos that fits in with this hypothesis that Phobos is an asteroid turned spaceship orbiting Mars. I'm going to cut to that right now. Habitation on the moon. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track if there's something very important to be developed from the moon. I'm not sure what it is right now, and I sure think we should identify what it is for America to make such gross expenditures again for human habitation on the moon. We can help. We can join with. Together, we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith. They're a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? Well, uh, the universe put it there. If you choose, God put it there. Is Maybe it? Now, I'll put a photograph up there of the Phobos monolith. This is a top-down photo. So you don't get a sense of how tall it is, how large it is. However, if you take a look at this photo, you can see the shadow. You see how long that shadow is? That gives you a sense of how large this is. Put it this way. If you came across this huge map, I think it, they, they said it's miles tall. They did, they, based on the shadow, they can, they can measure how tall it is. And if I remember correctly, it's miles tall. So imagine you came across this huge rectangular thing on Earth. Okay, it's a rectangle, perfect, rec perfect rectangle, rectangle, 
miles high, and somebody tried to tell you it was natural. You say, you got to be kidding me. Well, it's the same thing on Phobos. I mean, you have this huge, miles high rectangle sitting up there. It's not natural, uh, which suggests to me that Phobos isn't natural and that it is, in fact, a, a spaceship. There's a whole bunch of, of more information, including the fact that uh, a Russian space probe once, as it approached Phobos, got shot down by something. I think something came out of Phobos and shot down the Russian space probe. But I won't go into that. Um, I also want to talk about um, uh, other asteroids, or, or not even asteroids, I should say moons, other planetary bodies or bodies in our solar system that we suspect are natural bodies converted into spaceships. I've done a video on this in the past, uh, uh, Saturn's Death Star moons. I'll post a link to it up there so you can cl click on it and take a look at the research I did regarding that one. Saturn has three moons that appear to be artificial. They may be natural moons, but they were converted into what look like essentially spaceships. In particular, one, Mimas, has that same type of cratered surface that Pallas does, which again su suggests to me and other researchers that it's... Uh, the, the, these are rooms, essentially, inside the, the, the asteroid or the moon, and that the surface got weathered away, and that's why you see these craters. They're not craters. They're essentially old rooms that were uncovered by the surface getting worn away. Now, I want to also just, discover, uh, just talk about one more researcher. Uh, this is a NASA scientist. Uh, this NASA scientist wrote a book back in 1986. It was called The Ring Makers of Saturn. What this NASA scientist found is that there are huge, massive spacecraft around Saturn. We're talking about 7,000, one of them 7,000 miles long. I'll just to let you know, that means this spacecraft is about twice as long as the Earth is wide. I think the Earth is about 3,500 miles in circumference. So if it's 7,000 miles, it's twice as long as the Earth. There could be potentially billions and billions of creatures inside this spaceship. Ship. Um, but this scientist, uh, uh, Ring Makers of Saturn is his book. His name is, is uh, Bergrun. I'm going to post a link to it. I think it was Nick. Uh, Nicholas, I'm not sure uh, off the top of my head. I should have prepared a little better, but um, I'm going to put. Matter of fact, I'll post a, uh, a photo of his uh, book up there so you can read his his name uh, and the name of the book right now. He essentially not only there's spaceships around Saturn that are creating the rings of Saturn, but the rings of Saturn aren't natural. There's these spaceships that are creating the rings. Not only to say that, but he says these spaceships self-replicate. In other words, these spaceships create other spaceships. There's, uh, you know, whether they are in fact spaceships or maybe even huge, massive living creatures, who knows. Um, I honestly haven't read Ringmakers of Saturn. I made sure um, after preparing for this video, I made sure I got the book, so I'm actually going to read it. Uh, and if necessary, I'm going to do a, a, a video of its own on the Ringmakers of Saturn. But I want to introduce this as well, because it's why I put this asteroid palace into a, a much bigger picture, where we've got Phobos, the moon Phobos, uh, as a, a spaceship an asteroid that was a spaceship. We've got three moons of Saturn that appear to be artificial. Uh, we're essentially Death Star moons. It's for that reason that I see these strange things about the asteroid palace and I put it into a larger picture that, yep, it's probably a spaceship too. Uh, but do your own research. Um, I, s I suggest you read both sides to so get a complete bigger picture uh, of the argument. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, you know, comment down below whether you disagree uh, or agree. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And thanks for watching. Everybody have a great day and a nice weekend.